Hi guys, uh, here's another quick video hopefully explaining fairly clearly how to solve division questions using what is called a compact vertical layout method. Um, sounds a bit confusing, but basically the order of operations, what you're going to be doing is going to be exactly the same as the work you did on Friday. So if you haven't done that work, I'd at least go back and watch the video I put up about it, but it'd be worth giving it a try because if you understand what we did on Friday, the work we're going to do today should be quite a lot easier for you to do. Um, but yes, like I said, what we're going to be doing is that is exactly the same as what we did on Friday. We're just going to be presenting it using a vertical layout method that is more compact. So it's a neater way of doing things. Hope this video helps. Today we're going to be learning about something called Compact, compact vertical layout. Uh, this is a kind of division, and it'll lead on to something called the either long division or the bus stop method, which you may have heard of before. It's basically it's going to use the same method that we've talked about before, using multiplication to solve division questions. But it's going to be compact, which means it's not going to use up more space than we need. We're not going to use up uh, do any more equations than we need. It's going to be nice and tight, and only use the things that are important. Vertical means it goes up and down rather than side to side. So let's have a go at this. Okay, so the first example I've given you on the slides is 47 divided by 3. That's what you need to answer. The way that we discussed it in the other lesson was that we would think about 10 lots of 3 will be 30. And then we think how many more, we've got up to 30, we want to get up to 47, we think how many more lots of three can we fit in, we would think. My next step would probably be five lots of three. That would be 15. We could do six lots of three, but that would be 18, and 30 plus 18 would be 48, which is gonna to be too high. So what we know so far is we know 10 times three is 30, five times three is 15, so we know 15 times 3 must equal 45. How many have we got left then? We're up to 45, there's two left, so we can't fit another lot of 3 in, which means it will go in, 3 will go into 47, 15 times, and we would have two left, because that will get us up to 45. So that was how we did it in the last lesson. What we're going to look at today, though, is if there's a neater way of doing this. So the way we're going to lay it out is like this. We're going to think, how many times can 3 go into 47? Same question here. We're just doing fitting 3 into 47, which is the same thing as 47 divided by 3. So how many times can we fit it in? Just like we did over here, we can think, if we do 10 times, 3 times 10, that would give us 30. So we've done 3 times 10, that gave us 30, how many would we have left? If we're working out how many we've got left, we're, working, we're really asking what the difference is. And to solve a question in maths about what the difference between two numbers is, we do a subtraction. So you can either do this as a subtraction or, just as we did when we were working this out, that we already know that the difference between 30 and 47, if you were going up to 47, would be 17. You could also do that as a subtraction. It would give you the same answer. So now we need to know how many times can 3 fit into this one. We've done 3 into 40, um, 40, it's 47 and we did 3 times 10 was 30. And we know we've got 17 left. So how many times does 3 go into 17? We know, just like we did over here, we know that 5 times 3 is 15. So we could say... Let's put it in another five times. Up here we're, we're recording how many times three we fit in, and down here we're recording what that would come to. Three times 10 is 30, three times five, we're gonna record it down here, is 15. And then just like we did a subtraction here, to work out the difference between the 17 and the 15, to work out these ones, we can also do a subtraction or you can count up to find the difference because the subtraction is the same as finding the difference. The difference between 17 and 15 or 17 minus 15 is just going to be 2. But 
We could see how many times the three will fit into this two, but the two's too small. So the two's just gonna have to be left on the end. So we've got 10, lots of three, 47, to 30, sorry. We've got five lots of three, 15, and we can't fit the two, so it's just gonna be a remainder. So our answer then, for 47 divided by three, we fit it in 10 times, five times, which came to 15, and we'd have two left over. So that should, if we've done it right, give us the same answer. 47 divided by three is 15 remainder two. 47 divided by three is 15 remainder two. Don't worry if all of these numbers here are getting a bit confusing. The main thing you need to take away from this is that these numbers are on the top is how many fit in. And the reason why we're putting them in a vertical method like this is so that we can do subtractions to find the difference between these numbers up here. So let's do another one to see if it helps out. So if you're still finding it a bit confusing, we're gonna do another one just to see if that helps you. All right, the next example it gives I'm going to put a line down the middle because I want to show you both ways because that should show you that it works in a very similar way to how we've been doing and it should show you that if we do it right both times we should get the same answer because we're doing the same division question. The next example was 68 divided by 5 and if you're looking at the slides I've uploaded for the maths work today you should be able to see this one. If we're doing 68 divided by five. We're going to do it exactly the same way that we did the other one. We're going to think how many lots of five, how many multiples of five are going to fit into that 68. So nice and easy to think about our multiples of 10 first because those are the easiest. So 10 times five we know is 50. We want to think now about how many are left. If we've got up to 10 multiples of five is 50, we want to get to 68. So you want to think about how many more multiples of five will fit in. So you might want to count out, count up, sorry, in multiples of five. 50, you'd have 55. 60, 65. Now you could go up to 70, but that's going to be too high. So we're going to leave it at three multiples of five. Would give us, um, sorry, would give us 15. If we combine them together, I was getting ahead of myself, if we combine them together, 10 multiples of 5 is 50, 3 multiples of 5 is 15, and we know that 13 multiples of 5, there we go, is 65. And then we want to think about how many we have left, because we can't fit another multiple of 5 in. One more multiple of 5 would be 70, and that would be too high. So we know 13 multiples of 5, is 65, so we would have, 5 will go in 13 times, and then we would have 66, 67, 68, you'd have 3 left over. So we've done that using the method that if you've done uh, Friday's work, you should already know. Let's have a go at doing the method that we're learning about today, the, today, the compact vertical layout. So we're going to do 5. And we're going to think about how many times that 5 is going to fit into 68. Just like we did here, the easiest step to do is we know 10 times 5. That's up here, remember, we're, we're writing down how many multiples we've fit in so far. So we've done 10. If we did 10, if we looked at 10 multiples of 5, just like we did over there, we would know that that would be 50. So now we want to think about how many we've got left. We want to think about what the difference between 50 and 68 is because that will tell us how many we've got left and to find the difference, as I said before, we do a takeaway. So we can either do that as a takeaway, 8 minus 0 would be 8 and 6 minus 5 would be 1, so you'd get a 1 and an 8, 18, or you can just count up and think how much bigger is 68 than 50, that's all the subtraction is, it's finding the difference. So either way, you're counting up was doing a regular column subtraction, you'd get 18. Now we want to think about how many lots of 5 is going to fit in that 18 that we've got left. We've got up to 50, 
How many lots of five is going to fit into that 18? Just like we did here, we're going to think about our five times table. Five, 10, 15, 20 is going to be too high. So we're going to go with five, 10, 15. We're going to leave it at 15. And that went in three times. We need to put another three multiples up there. Three multiples of five to get 15. Now, just like we did here to do a subtraction, we want to think about what's the difference between 18 and 15, or what's the difference? Finding the difference is just the same as a subtraction sum. Eight minus five would be three, and one minus one would be zero. You could now do how many times does five fit into the three, but you'd find that no lots of five can fit into that three. So that three, because we can't fit in another five, is just going to be a remainder now. So we've got 10 lots of 5, another 3 lots of 5, and we've got a remainder of 3 or 3 left over. So our question, 68 divided by 5, we've got 10 lots and 3 lots, which makes 13 lots, and we've got 3 left over, can't fit 5 into that 3, so it's just left over, it's just a remainder. And what you should find is that done it right. However we answer that question, you should get the same answer, which we have done. All right, hopefully that was helpful. Um, if it will, you're still stuck and or you want to hand with any of the work that we're doing today, just drop me a comment or send me a message and I'll try and help out with that. Um, at the end of the maths work I put up, there were three bits the rocking remainders section, whole class practice section, and the problem solving and reasoning section. I would start with the whole class practice. If you can do all that and that's fine, then have a go at either the rocking remainders or the problem solving and, re and reasoning. Both the uh, remainders and the problem solving and reasoning bits, those are gonna be a, a bit trickier and they're good if you're understanding what we're doing and you want to try something that's maybe a little harder, but start with the whole class practice first. Right, see you later.